Welcome to the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast, where guys that want to build muscle come to learn how to do it properly. We understand that there's more to building muscle than mindlessly throwing weights around and chugging mass gainer shakes. We're not interested in quick fixes or anabolic assistance. We're interested in mastering the art, science and skill set required to stack on real muscle and strength. My name's Andy Clements and for the last 12 years I've devoted my life to figuring out how guys like us who don't have amazing genetics, don't have five hours a day to spend in the gym and don't want to take steroids as a shortcut can build insane amounts of muscle and strength in weeks and months, not years and decades. This podcast is the result of all the lessons I've learned along the way, and it will give you the blueprint to building more muscle in less time. To get you started, head to www.musclebuildingmastery.net to download your free six-week workout plan. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 63 of the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast. My name's Andy Clements. I will be your host for today, as for all days. And um, today I want to talk about... Something a little bit different with regards to training for building muscle, losing fat, whatever your goal is right now. And and that is about your environment. Now, before I get started, if you enjoy this content, if you resonate with it, if you feel like somebody else might feel the same way, I would really, really appreciate it if you would share it with a friend. Tag me on social media, share it on your Instagram story, take a little screenshot of the podcast and spread the love right now. Here's what I want to talk about. Lately, over the last few weeks, I've been getting a bit of a rut with my training personally, right? So I've just kind of been going through the motions. I've kind of been showing up to the gym and yeah, probably training a lot harder than the average person, training harder than most people that go to the gym because it's just what I do, you know? But I've not been very motivated. You know, I've just been going through the motions. I've been showing up and I've not really been enjoying it. And it's been doing my head in a little bit for um, the last few weeks, like not knowing, like, why am I not enjoying this? Why am I not getting the same buzz that I normally get from it? Because training is a big part of my life and I really genuinely enjoy it, you know, and um, I want to keep that going. But sometimes, you know, from time to time, the enjoyment drops and that's, that's to be expected. But, you know, it's normally when I'm tired um, it's normally when I need deload, it's normally when I've got a lot on and nothing really is going on in my life right now. I've just moved into a new place, I, um, you know, everything's going well, work's busy, everything's going good. Um, but for some reason, I just couldn't get myself up for these sessions, right? Now, and uh, this, this, this hasn't really happened unless I've been tired before. So it was kind of new ground. So I was like, fuck, okay, what do I do? So... Um, you know, I was training on my own, I was training with partners, I was trying to change my workout plan up, I was trying to, um, you know, find stuff that, that would keep me engaged and stuff like that, you know, like a toddler, um, but nothing seemed to be really doing the trick. So I was getting a bit frustrated, as you can imagine, right? And then this thought occurred to me, like, I don't know if you guys know, you guys probably don't know, but I, my sort of day job is not talking into my phone for a living, you know, um, doing podcasts, um, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> my day job is actually to um, take people around the gym and um, um, give them personal training sessions and have clients and online business and all that stuff, right? So it's all my own business, and but I operate out of a gym. So I can spend up to between 10 and 14 hours in the gym all day long, right? With client after client after client, depending on how many clients that I've got that day. So I can spend a lot of time in one place. Does that make sense? So when it comes to training, the lines for me personally tend to get blurred, right? Because it's hard to switch from work mode to training mode. So you guys, if you work in an office, for example, maybe you'll pack up from your office, you'll get your stuff, you'll put it in the car and you'll switch off from work mode and then you'll drive to the gym and then you're in gym mode, right? And you might have a pre-workout shake or a coffee or whatever you might have. And, you know, you, you, you're you forgetting about work and you, you're into gym mode. So I think this is what has been happening with me is I've been unable to flick as easily between work mode and gym mode, right? Because even though what I do for a living is talk about training and, and, and help people to build muscle and lose fat and, and be healthier and all that stuff that we like to do, um, you know, it's a very different mindset when it comes to doing your own thing, right? Because you've got to be very selfish when you're doing your own thing as opposed to selfless when you're trying to help other people. So it's, it's, it's been quite difficult for me to switch into that mindset. So I, I wasn't really sure what to do. And then it kind of occurred to me that I was spending 10 to 14 hour days in the same place all the time, right? So um, maybe it would make sense to get out of that place, right? So what I did was 
I um, signed up for a different gym. Now, I don't, I haven't left the gym that I'm at, you know, I'm working out, I'm still working there. That's still my place of work. And I'll probably go back and start training there eventually as well. But right now I've started uh, training at a new gym, right? And it's just a commercial gym. It's just one of these sort of big box um, cookie cutter bloody places that have loads of chest equipment and not all that much leg equipment, which is a bit annoying, but you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's different, right? It's different. And I don't want you to think this is all about me, right? Because even if you're not PT, too much of routine, too much of being in the same place, doing the same things, gets you into a rut, right? Even if you're not a trainer, if you're not, even if you're not spending hours and hours a day in that same place, be if you if you if you're training in the same gym for months and years on end then eventually your mind's going to be lulled to sleep and you're going to just start going through the motions with your sessions. You're just going to go through the same routine things and the same routine ways, right? And it's not going to be novel enough eventually to capture your attention, right? So this is why it's applicable and this is why I want to talk about it on the podcast. Because if you start to get into a rut and get into a routine, then eventually you're going to start to um, drop the intensity and the accuracy and the quality of your training sessions. And if the intensity and the accuracy and the quality of your training sessions declines, your results will decline. Your muscle building will decline. Your fat loss, your physique, your health, your mood, everything will start to decline because it, training is such an anchor that we use to keep all these things at a good level. So that's why I think it's important to talk about this right now. So, um, so I started a new gym, like I said, let me get back to this, the story here. I started a new gym and now, and now the difference, right? And like I said, the quality of the gym probably isn't, isn't as good, right? It's not about the quality. It's not about the quality of the equipment or anything like that, right? Because the quality of the gym that I work at is probably the best in my local area by a landslide. But I'm just spending too much time there and I've been training there for too long. So I switched to this other gym. I've got some like a bit of a novel uh, environment around me. I've got a different kind of environment around me and... The difference that I've noticed, now I've been training for a long time, or a relatively long time, you know, um, so, you know, probably probably about 10, 12 years, maybe, um, depending on what you call training, you know, um, but yeah, I've been going to the gym for like 12 years. Now, the difference I've noticed since switching to this gym over the last two weeks, right, so even though it's not as good a quality gym, but the difference I've noticed in my mood, in my energy, in my readiness and motivation to train and as a result in the quality of my sessions and my strength and all of that stuff is night and day different to what it was a couple of weeks before. Does that make sense? So uh, whereas I literally went from not changing anything, not changing the programming, not changing the time I train, not changing who I train with, not changing anything else, all I changed was the environment and the place at which I trained everything has changed for me in terms of my sessions. I'm absolutely crushing sessions now. I've gone from going through the motions, not progressing strength, getting fed up, getting annoyed with myself, wondering why I can't get myself up for sessions, to absolutely crushing my sessions, hitting um, all-time strength on some exercises. Now that, you know, if you've been training for a few weeks, isn't a big deal. If you've been training for 12 years, hitting all-time strength is a big deal, you know, it, it's it's not as easy as it sounds because you've you've sort of maxed out a lot. So I'm now hitting all-time strength, I'm, I'm hitting PBs, I'm, I'm loving my sessions, I'm not even necessarily talking to anybody in the gym, it's not about the people, you know, it's literally just about the environment, it's getting yourself out of that same place that you go and you, and, and it's like, um, uh, Joe Dispenza, the guy I've talked about the podcast before, he, he talks about, about the, the mind and stuff, he talks about it as like a school trip phenomenon, right? So when you were a kid, right, at school, let, 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 stay with me for a minute here. When you were a kid, um, every single morning, your parents would have had to drag you out of bed, right, to get you up and ready for school because you would just, you know, I need more sleep, or oh, I don't want to go. And then when it was school trip day, you didn't need to be dragged out of bed. You were up early, you were ready, you were dressed, um, and you were ready to go, you know, because it was novel, it was new, right? And so we need to keep things like that in our life, and especially around training, we need to keep little bits, not novel for the sake of novel, but just enough to keep us stimulated and motivated and, and ready to train. Um, and sometimes that comes with the environment. Sometimes it comes with other things as well. You know, sometimes it's a case of switching the training plan. So if you've been doing the same training plan for six, eight, 12, 14, 20 weeks, whatever, and you're fed up of it, then change the training plan, you know? Um, and that'll keep you motivated, that'll keep you stimulated, that'll keep you ready to go. Because your mood, your motivation 
can ultimately solely determine your quality of your training sessions. If you're not motivated and you're just dragging yourself into the gym, saying, oh, I don't want to do this and I can't bother today, um, you know, I, I, I'm fed up of it, whatever, um, fill in the blank sort of excuse, then what, you're not very likely to go and absolutely crush your session. You might do. You might get over yourself and actually have a good session. But the likelihood that you'll, that you'll hit PBs and you'll get a really good quality and accurate workout is much, much lower than if you were going in feeling motivated and ready. And sometimes that just means it needs a novel experience. So let me tell you what else I've noticed as well. So obviously my motivation, strength, energy, they're all up. But I've also noticed some interesting things that's happened outside of the gym, right? So I've just not, not, no conscious effort on my part, but because of this novel experience I'm having with training, where I'm now more motivated and now more having higher quality sessions, subconsciously, obviously, I am starting to not want to compromise the quality of those sessions, right? So now I'm being stricter with sleep. Now I'm being stricter with diet. Now I'm not missing meals. Now I'm, I'm getting my steps in. I'm getting my sunlight exposure in the morning and, and throughout the day. I'm getting the um, artificial light, you know, down at night so I can get a better night's sleep. I'm doing all the other things that I speak about all the time on the podcast that, yeah, I was doing to an extent before because that's just kind of how I live now. But I'm doing them like I've like turned the volume way up on them. And now all the other stuff that goes into training and building muscle and, and losing fat and being healthy and all that stuff, all the other stuff is is lining up and my results are going in the right direction. Does that make sense? So um, as a result of me creating more enjoyment around my sessions, everything else is going in the right direction as well. So that's the you know, the, the small change that I've made that's had a positive impact across my entire life because now not only are my results getting better um, and, you know, I'm looking better, I'm feeling better, I'm performing better, I'm sleeping better, my energy's better, my motivation's better. Not only are all those things better in a training sense, but I'm a nicer person to be around. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not as much of a dick to be around, right? Because I, uh, all the other stuff that keeps me in a positive frame of mind and, and all that stuff is is lining up in the right direction as well. So the people that are around me obviously are going to benefit from this as well. So yeah, it has it has an impact across the entirety of your life. Now again, I don't want you to think this is all about me. I'm using my story to illustrate a point here because I know you, I understand you don't care about me. You want your um, information advice for your specific training or, or results or whatever, right? You want to know the 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 nugget of advice. So this is it. What we can learn from that story that I've just told is that if you're getting fed up of training, you can try switching the environment in which you train in, okay? If you're getting fed up of training and nothing else is working, you can't, like, switching your training plan's not working and switching your training partner's not working and getting a coach or a PT's not working or whatever, you've tried all that stuff, try just switching your environment, man, you know? Because that, obvious, that honestly is something that can just be novel enough, even if it's just for a few months, to get you out of that rut because stay in the same place can make us get bored of training and the rest and the, the outside of the stuff can start to slip as well. Now, going to a new gym as another side note here gives us new kit to try and suss out and, 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 and figure out and figure out how we can do the same exercises on slightly different brands or slightly different models of exercise equipment. And that's going to deepen and, and um progress our understanding and our skill of training right because if we get used to using the same exact machines the same exact benches or whatever it is then we're kind of limited in, in what we can do whereas we can broaden our scope to be able to learn the principles of training if we train across a wide range of equipment as opposed to um, just being able to do one machine really well in one gym really well does that make sense so there's a loads of different benefits of um, switching your environment when needed. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it. You know what I mean? If you're enjoying your sessions right now and you have, you're killing the workouts and stuff, go for it. Keep going. But keep this in mind. Um, if you, your motivation starts to wane, you've tried having a deload, you've tried resting, you've tried switching your training plan up, um, try a different environment and um, see how it goes and let me know. Um, so that's pretty much all I've got. I know it wasn't a very long podcast today. But I wanted to get this out there because it's something that's had a big impact on my life over the last couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to give you some information 
and hopefully that is useful for some of you out there. So like I said, if you found that useful, if you think somebody else would find it useful, um, share it with a friend, drop a little screenshot on your Instagram story or something like that. And um, yeah, let me know what you think and I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. If you're ready to stop wasting time in the gym and start mastering the skill of muscle building, go check out www.musclebuildingmastery.net to download your free six week muscle building workout plan. I have specifically formulated this workout plan to take you through the three stages of mastering your body, layering on a more advanced training methodology each week as you progress. That means that regardless of where you are with your training right now, this plan will push you forward and help you stack on more muscle and strength in just six weeks. So head to www.musclebuildingmastery.net now to grab your free six-week workout plan.